I love I love this because you know it, there is there's something about I, like I, I collect books and uh, autobiographies and biographies. I love biographies. Like most of my biggest part of my collection in my library is bi- I love learning about people's lives. I always think about the the transition from those who tell stories about others, those who help produce and create stories about others, to the time when sometimes it does transition and then sometimes it is, oh, now what about my story? And so you now are kind of sitting, capturing stories, you're seeing how these people are, are sought growth, have gone through the journey, have been through the valley, have navigated so many things. When did, when did you start to get a sense that my story parts of my story I think are important for me to share. You know, it's interesting. Um, I didn't really seek to tell my story so soon in my career. And it's it feels funny saying that, knowing that I've been a producer for 18 years, but um, I did not look to really put my story out there. It, it was just time. Um, I had gone through some health issues and some challenges. And after everything that I went through, I just said to myself, my pain cannot be in vain. I have used this story to help other people, to help other women, to help other couples. And, you know, by doing that, I'm helping myself. By doing that, I'm releasing the pain that I had um, that was, you know, years in the making, you know, things that had happened to me. And I will continue to do that as well because that story is pretty long. Um, But, you know, after so much had happened, I remember telling my husband and telling my production partner, you know, I I have to share this. I can't let this be in vain. And to be honest with you, to pinpoint exactly what I'm discussing, it was a miscarriage. You know, what I had gone through years before that, leading up to that moment, it was inevitable that I had to share that story. I knew other people, other friends, other other family members who had had miscarriages, but it's kind of one of those things where women don't really talk about it. People don't really talk about it, especially in the black community. We don't really talk about these kinds of things. And I said, well, why not? Why are we not talking about this? Why are we not talking about what's causing this? Why are we not talking about that? This is just one more layer of aggravation, of frustration that we are going through as a people. Why are we not discussing this? And so that in that moment i realized that telling my story had to be a part of me helping more women helping to give a voice to the voiceless helping me to expand that audience so that maybe we can do something to change what's going on with our bodies and our lives in our culture this was inevitable for me and that was the defining moment for me um, to continue on with telling my story in, in, in addition to the fact that the original director of my, the first film that I produced, The Invisible Vegan, um, uh, my production partner, Jasmine Leva, she came to me and she said, hey, can you help me with this film? You know, I'm, I'm doing this film on veganism in the black community. Now, this was back in 2015, which is when we started filming. And um, and I said, sure, you know, during that time you're in L.A., someone comes to you with a project, you know, you're very much like, yeah, sure, let's just see what, what goes on. Let's just see what could happen. And so, you know, we began filming. And as we were filming, I began to do more research. Here comes that mindset back from the little known black history fact. Let me start reading. Let me start doing some more research the more that I learn. And so as I started reading and I was experiencing some health symptoms myself, I said, oh, my gosh, there is a connection between diet and women with uterine fibroid tumors, which is what I was suffering from. And so in that moment, um, you know, I said, oh my gosh, I started to build a connection, build a mental connection to storytelling and what was going on with me physically. As we began to discuss things on camera with uh, my struggle with fibroid tumors, um, and the conversation was opened up, women started to talk to me about their struggle. There was a smaller amount of women talking with me about it then because the the film hadn't been released yet. But within four years, we released the film. It was out on Amazon Prime and um, Jasmine had done some screenings as well and, and myself is included. And women would be coming up to me. Women would be sending me messages on social media. They would be seeking me out on email, you know, through friends of mine. Thank you so much for telling your story. Thank you so much for kicking that off and for 
you know, opening up a conversation that I was afraid to open up myself or to my family or to my doctor. I thought that I was alone in this. I thought that I could just suffer through it. And those words resonated with me, Lawrence. Those words said, okay, you have got to do something more. There are women out there suffering who are afraid to say something. They're just pushing through every single day and they are afraid to talk about this publicly or with their doctors and they just feel isolated. So Erica, you are in a position to do something about it. What 